December, the weather because of high temperatures and the flooding and the hurricanes and tornadoes and things that are happening throughout this country. So we know, Lord, that you are in control, the Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for the greatest gift of all. And as I say to Jesus Christ, he went to his cross and died. But on the third day morning, he got up with all power and say. So right now, Lord, we just give you all the glory and praise. And thank you, Lord, for just being in our lives, Lord. We thank you on the day that Heavenly Father Lord, blessing us to be able to celebrate it on the Mother's Day, Lord. We ask you to bless each and every lady that is here today, from the oldest to the youngest, from the front to the back, and all the ladies, Lord, the families, the husbands, and the, the men also, Lord. We know that Heavenly Father, that we put you first, that everything is going to be all right. So right now, Lord, we are claiming it to the that we're going to have a great day on today, Lord, and say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor, blessing, Lord, and our absence, and bless his family, Lord. We ask to continue to build him up, Lord. Strip him where he's weak and build him up where he's torn down and have him Lord, we ask you to bless the speaker of the house, the Father, one of God, that's going to come and give us a word, the Heavenly Father. Let me take it out, the spirit of the Lord, uh, the Lord, Lord, let me that God is still alive, the Heavenly Father. And we say thank you right now, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you bless the musicians, the bless the singers, the urshers, the deacons, the trustees, everyone that is here to
coming and holding on today. Amen. I need to know that a change is coming your way. Come on, let us stand to our feet on today. Amen. Hold on. A change is coming. Somebody needed to hear that on this morning. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Can we give our glory because a change is coming? We give God praise this morning. We give God honor because God is good and he's good all the time. Hallelujah. I mean, and no, he has kept us another day. And our mind is still on the Lord. Regardless of what you've been through last week, amen, God is still worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and show up the Lord. We were blessed to have a car to ride out to your church on today. Oh, God, we realize, God, that we are so blessed and we are so grateful on today. And so, God, we lift up our voice and tell you that we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We glorify you for what you already have done and what you are doing on today. God, we realize today that some come, Lord God, and, and their minds are wondering. And, Lord God, some come, they be burdened down. And, and some come, and, Lord God, it exuberate praise. And, but whatever the way that we come today, help us to focus on you on today. Shift our minds on today. Enter into your presence today and worship you. Because we realize, Lord God, that you are searching for people to worship you in spirit and truth. So, God, we lay aside every weight, Lord God, on today. And we glorify you. We magnify you. Oh, God, we realize that some are viewing us by the internet, and some is laying on their bed of affliction, Lord God, and some be realize that they want to be here for some reason that they could not be. God, we ask that you would just touch them in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we realize that you are the lifter of our head. Oh, God, we realize that you are the high tower that we can run in and be saved. But God, we realize, Lord God, if just one touch from you, oh God, will make everything all right. Touch the minds of your people, Lord God. Touch the spirit of your people, Lord God. Stir up your gift in this place, Lord God. Use your people for your glory. We glorify you. All glory belongs to you. We honor you on today. Have your way in this place. Be glorified, oh Lord our God. Have your way in this place. Be glorified, oh Lord our God. We worship you on today. God, we ask that you today that you forgive us for our sins. Now, God, we realize since we've been here last week, we don't thought some things, Lord God. We don't say some things. And God, we realize that it's a sin of omission and commission. Oh, God, we didn't do some of the things that you have commanded us to do. And God, we stand at the mercy seat, Lord God, after you forgive us for our sins. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord God. You said we confess it. Oh, God, yeah, you will be grateful. And forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We got our minds to be on you in this worship hour. Father, we ask that you will use the woman of God for your glory, Lord God. 
Father God, that we won't look at her, Lord God, but we will look at the spirit that's abiding in her, that you will use her and speak through her, Lord God. But God, we ask that you will open our minds and our hearts that we will be acceptable over the word of God on today. Lord, I ask that you will just tear up our ground. Oh God, that the seed will come in, Lord God, and be planted, Lord God. That he that have a ear that would hear what the Spirit is saying unto this house and to this church on this day. Oh Lord our God, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you all the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anybody got a hallelujah in your bed? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah! Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes. We have to be excited about the Lord. We have to give him a drill bit praise on today. Our scripture today that have been chosen, and you may have seen it on your uh, bulletin today. We're going to ask Reverend Kit Cock if she would just come now and read our scripture on today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Get excited about the word of God. Get excited, excited, excited. God is exciting. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Scripture this morning will be coming from Proverbs chapter 31, starting at verse 25. Will you stand to your feet, if you will? Get excited about the word. Get a smile on your face. This is the word of God. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Oh, Jesus, glory. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for your word. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. She looked well to the ways of her household and eat not the bread of idols. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praised her. Many daughters have done virtually, but thou excellent them all, excel them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Can I say that again? But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. My God, my God, my God. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own work praise her in the gates. So let your work be the work of the Lord and it will allow you to praise in the gate. Can I get an amen from the house? My God, my God, my God. You may be seated. Just want to say today that our women look beautiful and they're red, white, and blue. Why don't you just look at a woman and tell her that you are beautiful and you are stronger than you think. You are beautiful. Amen. Just be sure everybody feels it. You are beautiful and you are wonderful. Amen. Amen. You are beautiful. Johnson's on today. We want to honor all our ministers that's in the building on today. We honor our pastor, Harry E. Harris, on today and his family on today. At this time, we're going to have a greeting that's going to come from Sister um, Juliet Chisholm. And then after that, we're going to have a, a response by Lady uh, Jacqueline Johnson.
Excuse me. The announcement and then the occasion by Sister Cassie Dixon. The announcement. Good morning. Someone has lost a beautiful poop earring. It has sparkles on it. It looks like it's about a one and a half inch wide. If it belongs to, to anyone, you can get it from the office. On yesterday morning, Sister Asonia Mann passed away and she is the sister-in-law of Sister Ruby Mann. So that's Sister Asonia Mann passed away on yesterday, the sister-in-law of Sister Ruby Mann. Men of Zion, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Rock Hill District Men of Zion is sponsoring a one-day conference for all men. Our theme, Godly Men Coming Together to Spread God's Love in Our Community is geared toward males ages nine and up. We have presenters, Dr. Jared Fite of Robinson AME Zion Church, Reverend Henry Gregory of New Home AME Zion Church, Brother William Peterson of Cedar Grove Baptist Church, and some of our very own. The conference will be held July 15th, 2023, at White Hill AME Zion Church in York from 9 a.m. until. On-site registration will begin at 8.45 a.m. The cost is $5 for ages 9 to 12 and $10 for individuals above. Please note that no child will be left behind. Registration is asked but not mandatory. The success of, our, of this conference depends upon the initiative and dedication of each male member of our district. We solicit your prayers and attendance, yours in Christ, brothers of the, brothers of the men of Zion. And I have a, re a paper registration form here if anyone is interested. The annual church revival of Cedar Grove Baptist Church, August 6th, through 8th. On Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Pastor Aaron McCoy from Mount Vernon Missionary Baptist Church, Charlotte, North Carolina. On Monday and Tuesday at 7 p.m., Pastor Christopher Stackhouse, Lewis, Chap Lewis Chapel Missionary Baptist Church in Fayetteville, North Carolina, will be our speakers. And again, our revival will begin August 6th 
through the eighth. Thank you. our Savior Jesus Christ and to the Holy Spirit that leads us into all truth. We thank God for your presence here today. As Reverend Jones has mentioned, you look just beautiful with your red, white, and blue. But I want you to know why we chose red, white, and blue because July is a month of celebration. We celebrate our nations or our country. 200, we celebrated that on July the 4th, 247 years of freedom and a sovereign nation. So we praise God for that because it could be another way. Old Glory is red, white, and blue. So we're not here to represent Old Glory. But I did do some research. The red is for bravery, the white is for unity, the blue is for justice. Our red, white, and blue represent the uh, three of the 12 gems, gemstones of the royal kingdom. Ruby for red, uh, white, diamond, and blue is sapphire. So we must remember that we are a family of royalty. We thank God for just giving us this opportunity because this is the first opportunity we've had to celebrate Women's Day in the past four years. But we are grateful to be here today, and we just want to commend all of our females, I mean our um, sisters in Christ. We thank you for the work that you have done. We thank you for the work that is being done. We know that we're on a mission. Sometimes we have to um, call people just to check on them. You know, it is our duty to uh, share God's love with all. We have to work outside of the confinement of this, this building. We have to go out and reach people rather than for them to come and reach us. We have to do, you know, we have to take people on to um, appointments that doesn't have a ride. And sometimes we just need to go by and sit with someone that's kind of feeling down and, and blue. You know, we have to help the young mother that have young children to keep food on the table or roof over their head. It's so many things that we have to do as a child of God and as a sister in Christ. God is our, our father and he's our savior. He's everything to us and he gives us the strength and the ability to do what we need to do. And he blesses us, you know, that we may be a blessing to someone else. So let's just stay on the course to do God's work, to do God's will, because we are on a mission. Now, I want to say that um, the 4th of July, we did celebrate the 240th year. We saw old glory waving in the wind, very proud to represent her country, our country, I should say. We should be proud when we go out and when we stand to speak God's word, we should be proud, we should be bold, and we should give him all of the honor when we are out and representing him because we are royalty and we are his daughters of royalty. So let's remember that we are who we say we are, and I say I am God's daughter. Thank you. Amen. Praise God for that. We also see Mother Brown uh, with us today. It's always a pleasure to see Mother Brown. So good to see you, Mother Brown, on today. How many know that it's, it's giving time? Amen. It's giving time. We can be excited about giving on today. And we realize that all women's on today that we have had some envelopes that we had passed out early and we had asked for assessment. Uh, if you need an envelope on today that you will raise your hand and that the Ursha will give you an um, envelope. Also that you are given online that you can follow the prompt and also just put in somewhere a Women's Day celebration if you desire to give on today. But we ask that you now prepare your hearts and your minds 
and their giving. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for another day. God, we just thank you, Lord God, now for the opportunity to give. God, we ask that you would just bless the hands and the minds that desire to give. And God, the ones that just don't have, Lord God, we ask that you would give seed to them. Father God, we ask that you now bless this offering for the upbuilding of thy kingdom down here on earth. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to ask our hymn choir, they will give us a song at this time. There's a lily. Right. 
As we get ready to introduce our speaker on today, it is an honor and a privilege for me to stand before you to introduce her, amen, on today. Not really introduce her, but just present her, amen, for the ones that might be viewing on today. We are um, going to introduce you to the Reverend Iris, D uh, Iris Dickerson on today. She is our speaker on today. And as I stand here realizing that she is a member of Cedar Grove Baptist Church, our very own. One that can preach and will preach. And what I like about Reverend Dixon, she is a wife. She married to our trustee, Tim Dickinson. She is a mother. Amen. She is a grandmother. Amen. We've seen her with her beautiful grandkids. We can go on and on and on today talking about her. We realize that she wears so many hats. Amen. And she wears them because of the glory of God. We realize that she's an entrepreneur. We realize that she's in different uh, organizations. And, and she's doing a great, great job for the kingdom of God. And I ask that you on today not to sit in judgment of her, that you would just give God glory on today, that you will listen to what God is saying through her on today. And we just present her to you on today. But before she comes with the word of God on today, we're going to have a memorial recognition by our deacon, this Wanda Brown, I'm at Brown and Sister Nan Burr. And then after that, we're going to have a scripture by our music choir. And then after that, the next voice you're going to hear is Reverend Iris Dickinson. Just take a moment out to remember our sisters in Christ that's gone before us. I'm going to call their names. In loving memory of our dearly beloved sisters, 2020 through 2023, Rosetta Alexander Belton, Brandy Chanel Brown, Doris Mayfield Brown, excuse me, Brandy Chanel Boyd, Willie Mae Cherry, Nellie Brown Hemphill, Valerie Alexander Holly, Bessie Mae Peterson Moore, Jacqueline Dapp McCrory Patton, Videla Walt White. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and everlasting Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for our sisters that's gone before us. We lift up the families, Heavenly Father, to you right now. May you still comfort them. May you still strengthen them. And may you still give them what they stand in the need of. Heavenly Father, you left us here for a reason, to take on their legacy, to do what needs to be done. We're all sisters in Christ. Today is Women's Day, so we lift up all the women. And Heavenly Father, also the men. This is a time to remember all those that's gone before us. But on this day, let us all be on one accord and do a special prayer for our sisters of Cedar Grove Baptist Church. Keep us strong, keep us focused, and keep us living for you and trusting and believing in you. So as we light these candles and this flame burns, we're reminded that he's burning deep down in our souls. Jesus is gracious, and he's given us this day to remember our sisters, but also to get it right. So we all ask this, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Break up the power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. Hallelujah. We can get on into the word right now. God be glorified. God be glorified. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God, we give you the highest praise. We glorify you right now, God. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for the shepherd of this house, our pastor, Harold Lee Harris Sr., in his absence. Our prayer for his family right now, Lord God. Praying for the official board of Cedar Grove right now, Lord God. We are praying for every member of Cedar Grove. God, we are praying for the women of Cedar Grove. Holy Spirit, have your way. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy soul and sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. I don't know where it is, but devil, you are a liar. Devil, you are a liar. There is a word from the Lord. I know our theme comes from Proverbs 31, but we're going to head in a different direction. Because we talked about red, white, and blue. When I think of red, white, and blue, I think about liberation. I think about change for the better. Fix it, fix it, fix it. I want to honor my husband, my sweet chocolate drop. Y'all know he's sweet, because he's good to everybody. My, my husband, Timothy, who is in the rear, and my sister, and my niece and nephews, they popped up, y'all stand back there, so if y'all talking about me, <laughs> that's my corner over there. I got a lot of family and friends here, but I just want to honor those who took time to come out to the house of the Lord. And I won't be before you long, but I thought about liberation, and I thought about freedom, and I thought about rising to the occasion. So my subject today is She Rose. We're going to be coming from Judges chapter 4, beginning at the fourth verse, and we're talking about Deborah. She rose, Judges chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. If it's your desire, you may stand at the reading of the word. She rose. Judges chapter 4, beginning at the fourth verse. Don't make your exit right now. Amen. Judges chapter 4, beginning at the fourth verse, it says, Now Deborah, a prophetess. Y'all heard that? Now Deborah, a prophetess. A prophetess. Y'all got that part? We get back to that. The wife of Lepiada was judging Israel at that time. And she would sit under the palm tree of Deborah. You even got a tree named it. Between Ramah and Bethel in the mountain of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. What did they do? They came up to her for judgment. Then she sent and called for Barah, 
the son of Abinor from Kedesh and Naphtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded you, Go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor. Take with you 10,000 men of the sons of Naphtali and the sons of Zebulun. And against, and against you, I will deploy Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and the multitude at the river Kishon. And I will deliver him into your hand. And Barak said to her, if you will go with me, then I will go. Again, he said now, if you go with me, then I will go. But if you do not go with me, I will not go. Then she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, that's a big old but. There's something coming after that, y'all. There will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kedesh. And Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kedesh. He went up with 10,000 men under his command, and Deborah went up with him. Let's pray. Father God, this is your word. Give me what you want to, me to say to your people. Hide me and let your word go forth. And I know it, it will never return back void. Have your way. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. She rose. She rose. We're going to come back to that scripture, so don't, don't, don't put your Bible away. We're going to come to another little part. All right? All right. So I'm going to tell y'all right now, this, this robe and me are having difficulty. So if you will pardon me for just one moment. In advance for anybody who is offended by the muscles. Call me later and I'll show you how to get them. I want to talk to you about how we rise to the occasion and be the best, absolute best daughters and sons of the king. Not just any king, but the king of kings, the Lord of lords. As we possibly can, we want to be the best. We, we, we don't want to be half doing anything for the Lord. Amen? So we want to talk about that. And I want to tell you how we understand this concept called teamwork. Miss Kim, what you like to say? Teamwork makes the dream work. She loved to say that. It's, it's a true statement. We're going to get back to that too. Secondly, I want you to understand how we must rise above our own situations. Rise above our own situations and get the job done. Some people, they let these little interferences and obstacles, and as, as, as uh, Pastor Larry used to say, obstacles, used to let them hinder you from doing the work of the Lord. But we have to rise above our own situation, our own personal issues, and get the job done. So I don't know if you saw recently, and it was all over Facebook, and it was in the news, a young lady named Jolien Bomonko of Belgium. She was a national champion in axe throwing and shot put. And they were at the championship and two of her teammates who did the 100 meter high jump became ill or injured and couldn't do the event. This young lady, just imagine guns like these, all right. Throwing a shot put. Do I look like I'm built to do any 100 meter jumping over anything? Neither was this young lady, but she did it anyhow. This young lady knew that she, this wasn't her expertise. 
This was not her lane. She knew that people were going to make fun of her. She knew that there would be memes made about her. She knew people were going to be talking about her. And another thing she knew is she knew she wasn't going to win. But if she had not done what she did, her team would be disqualified. Y'all heard that? This young lady knew what the concept of a teammate is. Sometimes you have to do things outside of your comfort zone and look out for the team. In your team, all of you have the same goal that is to win. But sometimes winning ain't just you up in the top with your, with your medal. Winning is being a part of the team and sticking to the team concepts. Sometimes we want to write our own concepts for the team, but that's not what we're supposed to do. They're already established, but we, we want to break rank. We want to uh, 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 upset things because we're not in what? Leadership. They're not doing it my way. They're not singing it my way. Sometimes we fall into those little, little crevices where our flesh keeps us from doing kingdom work. Come on, somebody. We let our flesh keep us from doing kingdom work. Because we are so worried about us being in the front and, and somebody might see you as a subordinate. But you're not a subordinate. You are a teammate because teamwork makes the dream work. This young lady rose to the occasion. Say she rose. She rose to the occasion and did what was necessary to ensure that her team would not be disqualified. So many people in the body of Christ would sooner let the bottom drop out before they will help someone that's supposedly on their team. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If I'm not the leader, I don't want to be involved. If they're not going to do it my way, I'm not going to be involved. I hope it crumble and I hope it falls apart if they're not going to do it my way. Yeah. And then we're all the time saying, well, we're, well, we're all together and, and we're, we're going to get together and make something happen. But it's always one. Y'all know that one. They act like they're part of the team. But truly, they're not doing anything. Critiquing. Talking about one another. Watch out now. Anything destructive instead of being constructive. I'm going to tell you something about a team that I see. I watch these ladies back in the fellowship hall. They got their thing together. Y'all, come on. They deserve that. They have their act together at Cedar Grove. They make it happen for every event. They make it happen for every funeral. They make it happen because they know the concept of teamwork. They are a sisterhood that looks out for one another. Because with, if everybody did things their own way, nothing would get accomplished. Yeah. But why do we have that in the body? Why, 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 why we have such division in the body? I could tell you what is this right here. This flesh. And allowing the flesh and the devil to use you is why things can't get accomplished. You have those that have all these beautiful, bright ideas, but won't lift a tiny finger to make it happen. You have these people who always critiquing someone, but doesn't do anything to help build that person up. Y'all know what I'm talking about? They got, oh, oh girl, your, your hair, girl, uh, what? take me to the nail shop. You worried about my, you worried about my hair, take me to the hair shop. You worried about my car, take me to the dealership. You worried about my house, call, call 
all of me. Molly would love to have your business. <laughs> Am I right about it? You got folks that talk so much junk about somebody but won't do anything to help them. Amen. They don't know the concept of teamwork. All we know is tear down. Nothing about building up. Y'all see my sister back there? That's my best teammate outside of my chocolate drawer. That's my ride or die, get up in the midnight hour, whatever we got to do to get it done, we're going to get it done together because that is what we know. We're sisters, but we are teammates too. We are after the same goal, and that's to be the best wife, mother, grandmother, auntie, cousin, whatever we are to people. We have the same concept, and we lean on one another. Everybody do that with me. Lean on one another. It's okay to lean on one another. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay for someone to come in and say, I have an idea how to fix it. Will you allow me? And you say, yes. But when that pride come up, pride won't let you do that. <laughs> Am I right about it? Pride will make you miss church on Sunday because you don't see a certain person in the pool bit. The, the flesh will make you stay at home and watch on Facebook instead of coming on into the house of the Lord with the communion of the saints. Am I right about it? Y'all know those ones. Boy, I got more phone calls about why we didn't have church last Sunday. But everybody who called me don't even come. My bad. I'm just saying. This young lady, Jolene, was very inspiring to me because I have become complacent. Y'all know what that is? That means when you done got real comfortable right where you are and you don't want to step outside of your comfort zone or you just got, got lazy and say it's time for somebody else to do it. So you decide you're not going to do it. You decide that uh, it's over. Uh, I'm, I'm tired. But let me tell you something. What if the Lord got tired of you? If the Lord got tired of you and your mess? Wow, it's right. So we have to give 100% of our best, regardless of how we feel sometimes. Get out of our comfort zone, regardless of how we feel sometimes, and uphold your team. Because sometimes people just count on you to get some things done. If you want to move on from that position or that work, you train somebody how to do it. You think it's an ancient Chinese secret. You don't want to tell somebody how to do something. You, you got a recipe, but you won't teach nobody how to cook it. You want somebody to invite you to the cookout. You think you ain't going to get no invitation if they learn how to cook your, your meal. Share it. And that's how you build up your young people in the body of Christ. You train them how to line a hymn. You train them how to sing a song. You train them how to work the system back here. That's how you build up. Pulling somebody under your wing. I, I, I want to walk around like this. I got so many people under my wing and I got room for more because I'm going to rise up when it's time to rise up. Now, my issue is grumbling as I rise. I have a tendency to rump, grumble while I'm rising like the children of Israel. You grumbling, but you being blessed. You grumbling, but he using you in the vineyard. You grumbling because you being lazy and don't want to fulfill what you said you were going to do and walk through your promises. Y'all know though. I'm just talking about Iris. I can't talk about you. So when you become complacent, there's no growth. 
You put yourself in a box and there's no growth. Nobody can get in and you can't get out. But say, the word says the Lord will always make a way of escape, but only he can make that way of escape. You think you can do it on your own? That's wrong. Sometimes we're going to look foolish when we're doing kingdom work. See, my big old behind trying to jump a hurdle, I look foolish. Especially when I fall down. But when I fall down, I got a team that's going to help pick me up. If you can't look around this body in this house somewhere and see a teammate, that's a problem. Not because we're in the same bloodline. Not because we look alike. But because you should see something in me that is Christ-like that you should be able to lean on anytime, any place, for any situation. Well, I know I'm not hooping and running around here. I'm trying to make a point that we need to learn what it means to be a team, a sisterhood. A brotherhood, a body. Because if we don't, that is how we let the bottom fall out. That's why there are cracks in ministries, because we will not support one another. That's why we have people leaving the church, falling through the cracks. Deacons, y'all checked on y'all's people? Trustees, y'all checked on y'all's people. Deaconess, y'all checked on y'all's people. Church body, y'all checked on y'all's people. Don't always leave it up to them. Pastors and preachers, y'all checked on y'all's people. We all have an assignment to do. We're all part of the same team, which is the body of Christ. Sometimes you got to get up off your dunk and do some stuff. You got to go out and tell people that Jesus loves them. This I know because the Bible told me so. Sometimes you got to get out of self and get it done. When we were little, my sister and I would fight. In about 15 minutes, we back playing together. Why we can't do that in the body of Christ? We can get a little mad, but keep it moving. We can get a little upset with one another, but keep it moving. He said, be angry with sin not. But when you turn your back on your brothers and sisters, that is sin. Because you're letting the flesh be in control. In our neighborhood, we, we all get a little whooping together. We, we back playing the next day. Because we don't want to be away from one another. We have a connection. I have some girlfriends. And my husband said yesterday, he said, you got friend girls all over the world. <laughs> it seemed that way. But when I need them, they're there. When I need to connect with them, they are there. I can call them about anything. There are some that are specific ones that I call. I'm not going to call somebody that don't know what I need. That's not your lane. That's not your area of expertise. If I need a specific thing, I got a friend to call for that. People say it's because I got multiple personalities. But we're going to move on from there. But I got many friends. And, and everyone should have a circle. A circle. A confidence that you can call on. That can pray with you. But here is what something I want to tell you all. Stop making your circle a hole to destruction. Stop making your circle be a hole to destruction. If you have somebody in your circle that's doing you no good, kick them out the circle. If you got somebody that has nothing good to say, but always critiquing, kick them out the circle. If you have somebody in your circle that never brings anything to the table, Kick them out the circle. Because if you do not, they will turn your circle into a circle of destruction. They mean you no good. There's some people I grew up with I can't even speak to. But I can pray for. 
because I know sometimes they don't know how to approach me anymore since I don't do the things they used to do, uh, that we used to do together. We, I've grown up a little bit, just a smidge. But they, 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 don't, they don't connect with me. You know, one time I said, what, 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 why they don't never invite me to the cookout? What they did was cut me out their circle. When you get cut out the circle, you need to do something about it. Create yourself another circle of people who are good for you. That are part of construction and not destruction. Why do I bring this up? Because we have too many cracks in our team. We got some fake teammates. We got some phony folks that say they're part of the team, but are not. They smile in your face. <laughs> you know, all they want to do is take your place. They right there all the time, but have nothing for you. I don't mean that somebody got to always give to you, but recognize who in your circle. The next thing I want to talk to you about is rising above your situation. I had to learn this. I used to get into what we call a bad place. When my mind said to me that if I can't have it my way, as my husband called it, from zero to 100, then I squashed the whole thing. I had to rise above my own personal need and take one for the team. I had to do that. When I, when I accepted a position here at this church, I had no idea what I was doing. But God said, I'll show you. I'll lead you. And that is what we have to do. We have to rise above our own situations and allow God to lead us to do the work. Because the work will never get done if we all are pew warmers. The work will never get done if you do the same thing the same way, expecting a different outcome. So I had to rise above my own personal self and do what God called me to do. So let's talk about Deborah. I love Deborah. Deborah puts a boot on the neck of everybody who say a woman ain't called to do God's work. I might not get to preach no more, but here it is. Deborah did a mighty work for the Lord. A mighty work for the Lord. She was a prophetess, a wife, Hello? and she was a judge. So anybody who has an issue with Al one of us, Take it up with the Lord. Barack recognized who Deborah was. This daughter of the king. This called woman of God. Barack recognized how God dwelled in this woman. And he said, now, I know what I was supposed to do. But I ain't going if you ain't going. You ever been in a situation where you got a little sticky situation and you know you better not go by yourself? You better call on somebody who know the man that knows the man that is the man, the man who can change your situation. Sometimes you got to call on a woman to pray over you. Sometimes you have to call on somebody who will get up in the midnight hour and help you through your situation. Sometimes you got to stop putting people 
Bible down because you read one section of scripture and call it all that it is. God's word is for all people. God calls us out of all situations. He took me out of the muck and made me his woman of God to teach and preach his word everywhere I go. Everybody I speak to, I can't hardly say something without saying, Hallelujah! Thank your God! Because sometimes you gotta get up out of yourself and do what God told you to do. Devil wouldn't have got up if God didn't let her do it. Devil would have sat right there and said, No, he told you to do it. But she got right on up. But she put a big spot on it. She said, Nevertheless! Nevertheless! A woman will get the glory. Y'all know it? You men at Cedar Grove, I'm very proud of you. I am very proud of the men at Cedar Grove. Because you stand by your women. Come on, women, give them a hand clap. These men stand behind their women. They make sure that we get what we need. They support us overall. Overall. Everybody ain't like that. I just call it the way I see it. But the ones who did, you know who you are. I can always count on a sweet kiss on my cheek from Deacon Peters. A hug from my brother. An encouraging word from my deacons and all my family and friends. These men stand by their women. Deborah was a wife. Do you think she could have been a judge and a prophetess if she didn't have a good supporting man? All right? See, hold on. For the women who ain't married. Before you get all in my grits, that man didn't have to be a husband. It could be her dad, uncle, mentor, somebody that's pouring into their life. Okay? So I back out, right? Okay, because I get in trouble saying certain things. <laughs> but Deborah, she said that Sisera will be given into the hand of a woman. So they went on up. Went on up, being about their father's business. And here comes Sisera. He probably thought he had it. Locked down. He had them beat. But how many of you know when you come up against God's people? When you come up against God's people, he can turn that one to look like 10,000. He can turn that 10,000 and make it look like a million. When they come up against you, they see the army of the Lord behind you. They don't know who they messing with. And you have to let them know no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But when God is on your side, the battle and the war is all won. You already got the victory. So when the army, the nation of Israel was beating down Cicero's army, Cicero was a coward. And he fled. Ain't nothing worse than a leader when it get thick. Come on. Ain't nothing worse than having somebody in leadership role when it get high. They get ghost. You can't find them nowhere. So while his people were dying, he took off running. <laughs> but you can run, but you can't hide. His destiny was laid out by the prophetess, Deborah. So when he fled to this little area, a Kenite woman by the name of Jael saw him coming and steered him into her abode. He thought he was safe. <laughs> the devil thought he was safe. <laughs> Your enemy thought they were safe. But when God is in it, you have the victory. So he asked for a drink of water. 
So she goes to get this water, and while he lays down his head, she picks up a peg and puts it straight through his temple. So when Barak and his people came by, you looking for him? Hey, he right over here. He fell into the hand of a woman. So when you see a battle going on, and you see these women, stand up women, stand up all over the building, wearing the whole armor of God. Look at these warriors. We are our own sheroes. We are our own women who rise. Women say, I rise. I ain't hear you. Say, I rise. I'm going to rise above my mess. I'm going to rise above my situation. I'm going to rise above my financial problems. I'm going to rise above sickness. I'm going to rise above how men treat me. I'm going to rise above the issues I'm having on my job. I'm going to rise above it all because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I know who I serve and he has got my back. That's the one I'm talking about. When you need to lean, you lean on the one who will never let you fall. You lean on the one who will carry you through it all. You call on the name of Jesus. When you rise, he will help you rise above it all. She rose, maybe see. Deborah rose. You rose. Every one of us got a testimony in here. Or how we rose above the situation and came out victorious. Sometimes you just gotta get out your own way. Let go and let God. And God will give you what you need to rise above it all. Now, when I first came to Cedar Grove 24 years ago, I met a lady, a lady was sweeter than sugar. She looked like she was drizzling honey. I was immediately attracted to the love of God that was inside this woman. So, I got to know this woman. And she loved me. She held me. She didn't talk bad about me. When I went in ministry, she encouraged me. When I was in Afghanistan, she blocked for me. Everything that was trying to come my way. This woman is my shero of Cedar Grove Baptist Church. Mama Brown. I want to bless you with this gift for me and my honey. We love you. It's just a small gift for the great gift you've given me. Inspire me and many in this church. Most in this church, I can just about say how you've loved us and cared for us and being the great woman of God that you are. We love you. Are my shero because you rise above it all. Sickness, defeat. Everything else, defeat. I love you. But more than that, God loves you. Now her children, she's still y'all mama. She's still y'all mama. But she's my hero, my shero. Standing all over the church.
We're going to do something we ain't done in a while. First, I want to offer Christ to those who do not know him for the free part of your sins. There may be one looking for a new place to worship. There may be one who wants to return back into the arms of the Lord. So today, just like the Holy Spirit was welcome, you are welcome. If there be one in the house that wants to give their life to Christ, or one that wants to come and join the body of Cedar Grove Baptist Church, you are welcome. The invitation has gone out, but I see that none have come. But just know this, this ain't it. The pages keep turning in this book. Christ is always waiting with open arms. He's always knocking at the door of your heart. You know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. He's been talking to you late at night. He's been trying to move you to move yourself. But what he will not do is force himself upon you. So that invitation is always open. All you have to do is say yes. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, save me from myself. <laughs> and he will come in and suffer with you. But at Cedar Grove, at 26, 24 Saluda Road, we love God. And anytime you want to come and join us at the Grove, you are welcome. Bring your whole family. We got room. Bring the, the family next door. We got room. Those in Facebook land, we got room. Come on now. We are waiting. We preach and teach Jesus. The love of God. And the movement of the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. Understand that there is presentation. already recognize him today but how many of you know that no matter how much we recognize him we can't do it enough so we just honor him today and we just thank him for allowing us to be here Kim and I are up here uh, right now to honor a special person it's called a special appreciation award this uh, and it's gonna be for a lady here at Cedar Grove since this is Woman's Day she is faithful a lifelong member of Cedar Grove Baptist Church. She is a devoted and longtime and active member of the hymn choir, the adult Sunday school, Bible study, seasoned saints, intercessory prayer, and the ushers ministries. She currently holds the honorary title of the most seasoned usher of Cedar Grove Baptist Church, a position she has served in for over 50 years she previously served as a member of the Culinary Ministry, the Senior Women's Missionary, and the Sandy River Baptist Association Lower Division. 
She is a woman who loves the Lord and is a faithful servant. She is dedicated to the building of God's kingdom, which is demonstrated by her works. She is a woman of dignity and humility. She is family oriented and delights in her family. She is a mother of four, one of which is deceased, the grandmother of four, and the great grandmother of one. She's also my cousin, my friend, and I love her as many of you do here at Cedar Grove. I would like to present to you our very own Sister Juliet McCrory Chisholm. Please come forward. Brother Chisholm. And y'all heard how I said that? Mother Chisholm. Mother Brown. Mother. Y'all young folk? Mother. Stop talking to our seniors like y'all talking to y'all friends. And respect our mothers of this church. Amen. On your feet, please stand, please stand, please stand. I've enjoyed myself and I thank God for allowing me this opportunity to bring forth his word. I know I'm a comedian sometimes. Y'all know me, that's how I am. But I love the Lord. And I love seeing the smile. everyone's face. 
So we're going to bless food and have our benediction and go and fellowship with one another in the fellowship hall. So I ask that all our guests please stay. Because as I talked about before, we have an excellent culinary arts ministry. And they be putting it down. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your word that's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our feet. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit stopping on by Cedar Grove. Lord God, right now we thank you for the food that has been prepared, that it be nourishment for our body. Thank you for the hands that prepared it. And we glorify you as we partake of this meal. And Lord God, we ask you right now to go with us wherever we go and that you Lord liberate the place that we walk in freedom and we rise above every situation and that we become our own sheroes in our story and we thank you God and glorify you now may the grace of our Lord and the Holy Spirit by the grace of our Lord I'm at the grace of our Lord and the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. We ask that you rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Everybody say. Amen.